Do not adjust your technological device. Do not fiddle with your headphones. Do not wait any longer, my friends. We're back. Sorry about that slight pause in the series, but now, prepare yourselves. As things are about to get epic, as we begin the thrilling three-part series finale of... Phone Box Phenomena! The room was filled with the simple, terrifying sound of a clock steadily ticking down to zero. Everyone stood in stunned silence, staring at the enormous nuclear bomb in front of them. Every tick was another second closer to death. Jump in, cocktail, anyone? No? Gosh, silly Johnny, what am I thinking? Nuclear bomb about to go off any second, and I'm off doing champagne cocktails. Ridiculous, I'm so sorry. This is clearly more of a Pims affair. Hang on two ticks now, just grab some fresh fruit. Fresh fruit? Fresh fruit? Fresh underpants is more like what I need right now. Oh! Oh, I won't be two ticks. We've only got about two ticks! Extra, extra, read all about it. We're all gonna die any second now in a hood nuclear explosion. Read all about it. In other news, a cat got stuck in a letterbox today. I, 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 I don't know how to deactivate it. We, we need new code. There's nothing I can do. Sorry, everyone. Looks like this is it. Bogus. Extra, extra. I need extra time. There's so much I haven't done. I've never even been surfing. Guess now I never will. Bummer. I gotta say, hey, I do not want to go yet. I do not want to go. I love you, Jan. The bomb ticks its final ticks. The deafening noise of imminent death shaking our heroes to the bone. Suddenly, and silently, Max's phone box door slowly swung open, and that now all too familiar blue light started emanating from within it. Whoa! Here we go again, dudes! What's gonna come out this time? Not more of those freaky floaty dudes, I hope. They were too trippy, man. But nothing came out. At least, not at first. But then there was something. Something distant, uh, distant noise. Is that music? The distant music grew louder. I hear it too. So do I. Like, what is it? As the music filled the room, Max suddenly dropped his head as if he'd somehow fallen asleep. Then slowly, he raised it again and started moving towards the bomb. What's he doing? I think he's in some kind of trance. Then, as if he was being carried by the music, he moved right up to the bomb. He reached out his hand and typed on the keypad. The ticking stopped. The music faded away, and the phone box door swung slowly shut again. Right, who's the pins? Meanwhile, in Analogica's lair... Let me out of here, let me tell you. Let me out of here, right now. I refuse to be kept in this place a single second longer. Although, I do love those tiles. Where did you get them, let me ask you? I'm looking for something just like that for my bathroom. Silence, you vacuous vanity victim. I have a great deal of immensely ingenious and extraordinarily evil work to do, and I can do without your constant caterwauling. Then why did you bring me here, let me ask you? I'm clearly crucial to whatever stupid plan you've got up those hideous out-of-fashion sleeves of yours. So start treating me with a bit more respect. Let me tell you, yes, you should, yes, you should. Let me tell you, you should. (laughs) I don't need you. You half-witted ham. I only need your dress. Brandon, be a good boy and get it off her. Yes, mummy. I'm going to lower the force field now. But in case you have any boring ideas about escaping, 
The Grey have this building completely surrounded. You wouldn't be able to manage even one step outside. Mind you, you probably couldn't anyway in those ridiculous high heels. Never mind about escaping. What are you going to do with my dress? Do you have any idea how much this cost? Analogica tapped a few buttons, and the small force field keeping Helena in her cell disappeared. Brandenburg moved up to Helena. There's no way I'm giving you this dress, Snake Boy, so why don't you just slither off? Look into my eyes. And there's no point trying any of that nonsense on me. Deep into my eyes. Because I have an extremely powerful mind, let me tell you. Your will is no longer your own. Your will is mine. Only mine. Nothing gets into this head. Oh, no. It's like a fortress in here, let me tell you. You will never get your hands on this dress. He took the dress 20 minutes ago, you hopeless harpy. You've been in a trance ever since. Helena looked down, and sure enough, her dress was gone. And she was now wearing a dressing gown. You have got to be kidding me! Meanwhile, back in the office... Where the hell did you go? You can't just leave a nuclear bomb here and then wander off back to your palace, or Prince of Posh! Terribly sorry, old chap, but one simply can't serve pims without fresh fruit. Just wouldn't be cricket. Never mind that. How do you know the code to stop the bomb? I don't know. It just, like, came to me. I can't even remember it now. Peculiar is what it is, I tells you peculiar. That was totally bodacious, dude! You, like, saved all of us. And that music was trippingly awesome, too. I'm gonna write a rock version. Excellent. Where did that music come from? One of those other universes? Like the one where I was tall? I like that one. Possibly. Or from someone else's time. But I'm afraid none of that really matters right now. What does matter is getting Helena back. I got to agree with our four-eyed friend. But we don't even know where that foxy fiend Analogica's lair is. Or how to deal with those crazy floating grey dudes. They like totally had us frozen to the spot. Hmm, I don't know about the grey. However, Anna did speak to us from her lair using our own computers. So there's a chance I could trace the signal back and therefore discover the whereabouts of our headquarters. Yous is like more cleverer than Weez gives you the credits for if you knows what I'm saying like sort of thing when I'm saying it if you know what it is I'm meaning like sort of thing, you know? Yeah, thanks. Did someone mention the Grey earlier? Now there's a rum bunch if I ever saw one. You know the Grey? Well, I've never been to dinner with them or anything, but yes, we've had a few encounters, shall we say? I, I don't suppose you know any of their weaknesses. Oh, one or two, one or two. More importantly, though, do any of you chaps happen to know if there's a decent croquet lawn around here? I've got an absolute hankering for a game. I've located Analogica's lair. According to my trace, it's in the middle of a field just two miles from here. But when I cross-reference these coordinates with my maps, no building shows up anywhere in that area. Do any croquet lawns show up? I'll croquet you in a minute, oh lord of the prince. Oh! Her base must be hidden somehow. Let's just go to the coordinates and, like, totally freestyle from there, dudes. Cowabunga! But we still need to deal with the grey. I never liked grey. I'm more of a pastels kind of guy. Yes, tricky blighters. Trouble is, as soon as you get near them, you freeze because of that dreadful humming they do. Even if you drown it out, still freezes you. And indeed, anything organic. Unless it's been ordered not to, dash it all. Even a decent lawn will do. No weaknesses at all? Oh yes, silly Johnny. They are silicon-based chappies, so if you stripe them with the right resonance, they crumble like digestive biscuits, don't you know? Sonic swords usually do the trick. Don't suppose you've got any? Do we have any impossible swords which are clearly from either the future or another dimension? Um, just let me check. Read all about it! No! Right. I've got a plan. Listen carefully, everyone, and I'm going to delegate jobs. Gentlemen, we are going to attack Analogica's lair tonight. And we are going to win. Here's what you're going to have to do. And once I've explained all of that, I'm going to have to do something I should have done a long time ago. Put a padlock on your refrigerator? No. 
I'm going to rebuild Forvo. <laughs> Excellent! Meanwhile, back in Analogica's lair... The sample is ready, mummy. Excellent. Sample? What sample? Why, Claude's blood, of course. What else do you think we needed you for? Your towering intellect? Activate the Eden Extractor. Yes, mummy. Eden Extractor activated. What the hell are you doing? Oh, just part of my absurdly amazing plan. You know, I really do amaze myself sometimes. The machine buzzed and whirred, and slowly, the figure of a man started growing, bathed in an eerie red glow. Ah! You should be happy. You might say, we're bringing him home, in a way. And with him, I will finally gain full control of Silverlight, and then... The world! <laughs> Helena, say hello to Claudacity. No! Oh, and something else you might like to know. That dressing gown you're wearing, it's from Primark. <laughs> no! What is Len's ingenious plan? Is Claude really back from the dead? Can this finale get any more epic? Oh, yes, it can. Find out next time in another thrilling episode of... Phobugs Phenomena! Phobugs Phenomena starred Adam as Johnny Hockey Sticks. <laughs> Thought you got rid of me, didn't you, eh? Not for a second, you splendid, splendid fellows. Tally-ho! Max as Maximum Helling. I've been living in one of the voiceover boots, and I'm not gonna tell you which one. Oh! Sean as Sean of Shotgun. My buddy's coming back! Boo delicious! Column as Column Inches. Read all about it! Phonebox Phenomenon returns after painful and difficult break, and I couldn't be happier! Yay! Nathan as Lenovo. Now I'll show everybody what the humble assistant of the head of IT can do. Was that arrogant? Sorry. Emily as Helena Handbasket. Somebody bring me a Dolce & Gabbana ensemble with matching accessories right now, or so help me God. Caro as Analogica. Oh, you delicious dim-witted dunces have no idea what I've got in store for you. <laughs> no idea! <laughs> <laughs> Sean as Brandon Berg. Does anyone have a lozenge? And me as me. It's good to be back. Join us next time as we continue the thrilling series finale of Bone Bugs Penal.